1996 is here. I'll show you the moves that we made during spring training, and then we're going to play our opener against the Dodgers. If you're excited to see if the Astros can break through this year, give my video a thumbs up and let's help others find it. On to what we did. He's back. Greg Jeffries is home after signing a $10 million deal over three years. He reunites with Barry Bonds from when before I took over the Astros. Both of them were part of the 1990 National League West champion Astros. They fell uh, in seven games to the New York Mets. It's funny how as much as I've changed this team, there's so many things that haven't changed. Bonds is back. Jeffries is back. Uh, I look at some of the prospects. Shane Reynolds and Pete Harnish are top prospects. Even Larry Lenny Brucher is in there too. So it's amazing how some of the key pieces of the team are still are still around. So third base is definitely settled. The only thing that clouds up is Bill Miller's future. The former Cubs prospect is going to start the season in Triple A Tucson. We also were able to land Daryl Sherman on the cheap. One year, 750K, considering his initial demands were like two and a half million, I'd say that's a good steal. I've got him partially trained in right field during spring training, but he'll play a little bit more center field at first. So there's nothing left to do for now, but we have plenty of cash remaining. 2.8 million to be exact. That's about 9% of our budget. So we've got plenty saved up to make a mid-season splash. One trade option we didn't pull the trigger on. Jose Valentin was available at shortstop. Uh, be a pretty decent upgrade over Alex Rodriguez, but he'd eat about half of that free agent money I have. And he'd be blocking A-Rod, just like Bill Miller's already blocked. So, probably not worth doing that one quite yet. And especially given we have to give up Jason Bray. But it was an interesting, like, compelling trade possibility. So, let's talk about the position players we do have. Let's start with... Um, oh, are we in the right screen? We are. Uh... Sherman, starting, you know, who we just signed, like he should be really great at the top of our lineup. Walks a ton, good batting average, uh, and hopefully he'll become, you know, good defensively at third base once we get uh, into things. And then on the two hole, Durham and Chris Hoyles can kind of flip flop between the two and the six. It's going to be Durham to start things off. Uh, Bonds and Jeffries are an awesome three four, and Chad Townsend did himself the first base job after uh, 53 homers last season and uh, then that was in AAA and then seven just in September alone for Houston and then David Justice and A-Rod are going to round out the order against righties looks slightly different against lefties not too different though Jeff Mantle will play first Chad Townsend has enormous splits and he's a left-handed hitter and then Jerome Walton will come in for Justice and play center and that kicks Sherman over to right, so he'll get a little bit more development on that position that way. Because when Andrew Jones comes up in the, around the middle of the year, it's going to be time for either David Justice or Ryan Klesko to take a hike. And then Daryl Sherman and Jerome Walton will platoon in right. There is some bad news. Unfortunately, Edgardo Vasquez, our ace, is going to miss probably half the season with a shoulder itch issue. That is no fun at all. Leaves the pitching rotation a little bit thinner than I would like. Shade Reynolds is back, he had a decent spring, so it seems like he's healthy. Pete Harnish has always been steady at the number two, but our three and four starters aren't exactly championship material here. Uh, fifth starter won't be needed for another week. It could be Jason Bray, it could be Doug Malicki, it could be Mike Soratka. Got a week to figure that out. Bullpen looks really good. It should be one of the better ones in the National League. Mostly the same crew as last year, but with one big upgrade, and that's John Wetland instead of Jeff Robinson. And then one more name that's probably not familiar, Mike Holtz, who got like four innings for us last year. He's going to be in early on as a lefty specialist, kind of a second one, but he'll go back to the minors after five or six days to make way for our fifth starter. 
So hopefully we'll have enough pitching while uh, Vasquez is out to kind of keep us in things. We'll see what uh, OSA thinks. Here's its National League predictions. All of this leaves us in a kind of a dogfight for the National League. The Cubs are predicted to drop all the way down to last, and then the Cardinals leapfrog us from third to first. Just eight games separating first and last. And the Expos and the Dodgers look like they're going to be the class of the National League again. The Phillies and the Padres are likely challengers for the wild card, but they're just predictions. American League side, Yankees look like the best team. Uh, the Rangers are definitely falling back to the pack. They have strong pitching, uh, but they've lost more bats, and they're kind of they're starting to look like the Cubs did last year—a couple superstars and a bunch of bums. So, the pack is pretty condensed. You got the Orioles in there, the Red Sox, the Indians, uh, the Royals, who actually just signed uh, Chili Davis, like after these predictions came out. So the Royals probably contend for the AL Central there. Uh, California's made a big push back into the back into contention. And the A's look like they might crack 500 for the first time in forever. Minor leagues. So we're sitting seventh, thanks mostly to Carlos Beltran and Andrew Jones, both up there in the top 20 or so. Miguel, or actually uh, Detroit's got the uh, best prospect uh, organization in baseball. Vidro coming in at third, and then Francisco Cordova, they just drafted. Miguel Cabrera, Miguel Cabrera, Miguel Tejada is the number one prospect in baseball right now. Miguel Cabrera's coming soon. Uh, and he's in Denver, so we'll see what he does uh, in the thin air once he gets called up. Looks like maybe in the summer, maybe next April. We'll see. And I got a couple Hall of Famers to announce. Jim Rice is inducted on his second try. Got almost 80% of the vote. Overall, his career numbers were pretty similar to real life. He didn't spend his whole career in Boston, but funny coincidence, he still managed to lose the 1986 World Series, and he still managed to lose in the League Championship Series in 1988, just like he did in real life. He just did both of those in Philadelphia instead of Boston. Speaking of that postseason, 1986, he hit 343 and two home runs in this postseason, winning the National League uh, Championship Series MVP against my San Diego Padres. So boo you, Jim Rice. But congrats on the induction anyway. Well done, sir. A second player was inducted to the Hall of Fame, and this one's more of a personal favorite for me. Mario Soto in his first year of eligibility, 94% of the vote. 1982 was his career year in real life, but in this save, that was just the start of an unbelievable run as the co-best pitcher in baseball, Fernando Valenzuela being the other one. He won the Cy Young in 1983, 1984 as well. He won a combined 51 games in those two seasons. He also led baseball in strikeouts five seasons in a row from 1982 through 1986, and he won three playoff games in 1986 against Jim Rice's Angels to give the Angel or to, uh, to give the uh, I'm sorry against Jim Rice's Phillies to give the Angels uh, their World Series title. His postseason career five and one with a 1.58, 71 strikeouts in 79 innings. Unfortunately, arm injuries derailed his career a little bit early. In uh, 1989, they started. But it was great to see the voters recognize this amazing nine-year run. So bravo, Mario Soto. It was quite a career. So that inc uh, is, will be it for the build-up. Let's play the Dodgers. Get our uh, screen flipped over here. Here is your opening day lineups and how it's all going to shape up. Interesting that the Dodgers have four left-handed hitters to lead off against Shane Reynolds. They're also throwing the lefty, Greg Swindell. So those two adjustments to our lineup are in place. Jerome Malton will hit second uh, in the lineup for David Justice. And then Jeff Matto is hitting sixth in the lineup for Chad Townsend. 
And I think that is about it. Uh, again, these four lefties in a row, this could be very helpful for us. We've got those two lefty specialists ready to go. So with that, let's play opening day. And for the second time, just absolutely brutal recording quality means you had to just show highlights, but we get an easy win on opening day against the Dodgers and back it up with another pretty easy win, 11-6. Our offense is on fire to start the season. So that is a wrap for today. If you like the content, please give me a thumbs up and help others find the video. Gonna try and find some new recording software because this is not working. Meanwhile, remember to take care of yourselves and your neighbors. We'll see you next time.